Welcome to ENN, I'm Erica Hughes. After four years as president, Dr. Jeremy Brown will be leaving Edinburgh University. Effective June 1st, Dr. Brown will be undertaking the presidency of Dowling College located on Long Island, New York. Dr. Brown notified students, faculty, and staff of his decision via email on March 14th, calling his time at Edinburgh one of the most challenging and rewarding experiences of his professional career. President Brown's decision comes on the heels of Governor Corbett's proposed 50% budget cut for the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education in his 2011-2012 state budget. March is National Nutrition Month. Jessica Coons will be taking a closer look at nutrition on campus in a two-part series. Stay tuned next week for a special interview. Now here's Jessica. Food is one of the most important aspects of being on a college campus. Being as March is National Nutrition Month, I'm going to give you a closer look at Edinburgh Dining Services. Pizza, subs, wings, burgers, chicken fingers, salads, pasta, fruit, cookies, ice cream, and more. The options seem endless, and the dining halls are more than just a place to eat. They're a place to catch up with friends, hang out, and study. Given how important dining during college is, I caught up with students to get their opinions on Edinburgh Dining. I feel like if you want to eat healthy, there's a lot of places here that will help you be able to eat healthy. Um, it's just your choice. Like, if you, There's a lot of food that's unhealthy here too, but if you choose to eat right, there's plenty of places to do that. Well, Van Houten has the whole salad bar option, so that's always healthy. Um, but the only thing is, here at Rose, there is burgers, and they have the pizza option and stuff. So the only really healthy option here at Rose, at least, is the subs. You know, you can get a veggie wrap or get some hummus. But uh, at Rose, it's, there's really not that many healthy options. There are healthy options here on campus, but I think there are more unhealthy options, and they, they unhealthy outweighs the healthy options. So it made, for me, harder to choose healthier meals throughout the day. I know there are salads and things like that, but there are a lot of things with sauces and cheese. If you choose to eat healthy, I believe there's a wide variety to choose from on campus. Given the amount of variety that students are offered on campus, it comes down to the individual to choose wisely. Edinburgh Dining Services also has a multitude of nutrition information available on their website, dineoncampus.com backslash Edinburgh. The site includes nutrition charts and a personal journal, links to the food pyramid and government health websites, and in-depth answers to nutrition questions. Now that you have a look at the student's perspective and on-campus nutrition options, stay tuned next week for a special interview with a dining services representative. This is Jessica Coons for ENN. Ladies, listen up. If you have a thing for men in uniform, then you don't want to miss this. The United States Navy Sea Channers will be presenting a free concert right here at Edinburgh University on April 4th in Cole Auditorium. The Sea Channers, the official chorus of the U.S. Navy, perform a variety of styles, ranging from patriotic anthems to Broadway classics. The show is free and open to the public. Doors open at 7 p.m. Have you ever thought about starting your own business? Then Angel Investing 101 is here for you. Hosted by Business and Economics Department, Angel Investing can provide budding business owners with a great head start. Hosted by CEO and President of the Blue Tree Capital Group and Edinburgh alum, Catherine Mott, this interactive presentation came to Edinburgh University recently to give business owners some advice. The Edinburgh University Women's Studies Program held a discussion panel and invited men. The discussion entitled Feminism, It's Not Just for Women, included a panel of just that. The panel included Dr. James Fisher, Dr. Samuel Claster, Dr. Ron Spiller, and moderator Patricia Neff. Currently on display in the Bruce Gallery is the exhibition Style Sheets, New Works by Marjorie Amdor. Amdor is the chair of painting and the drawing in the fine art department at Rutgers University in Camden, New Jersey. Amder's work, a mix of painting, drawing, and sculpture, is created using layers of paint, beeswax, photo transfers, and acrylic resin. Her creations have been featured in several art magazines and displayed internationally. 
What is your brain made of and how does it work? On March 19th, the Psychology Club was stationed at Mill Creek Mall to answer those questions and more. As a way to celebrate third annual Brain Awareness Day, the idea is to educate and raise awareness about how the brain works while advocating for more research into disorders of the nervous system. Several education stations were set up and children were able to build canny neurons and interact with the brain, Brainy the Robot. Brain Awareness Day is an international event sponsored by the Society for Neuroscience and the Dana Initiative. A natural resource that exists everywhere on the planet that could help end poverty, yet it's been largely ignored. That resource is women. In many of the world's poorest communities, their potential often remains untapped. I am powerful. I am powerful. I am powerful. It's a source of power the world can no longer afford to overlook. She has the power to change her world. You have the power to help her do it. The forest is special, magical, <laughs> and very precious. One careless act caused by people and its beauty could be gone for a lifetime. Protect our friends in the forest. We'll all pitch in. Only you can prevent wildfires. To find out more, log on to SmokeyBear.com. Hey there, Timmy. Are you tired of walking all the way to class? How about in the rain? In the snow? Instead of trying to find a parking spot, paying for gas, or parking tickets, wouldn't you rather spend your money at places like Walmart, Erie, or the Mill Creek Mall? Shopping, class, the movies, wherever life takes you, EMTA can get you there. Ride free with your student ID. Magical thing about using energy wisely is that anyone can do it. Use energy-saving light bulbs, energy-smart power strips, and turn off computers and game systems when not in use. Get together and make a difference. Learn what you can do at energy.gov slash tink. Hello everyone, I'm Dorian Shearn, Chief Weather Forecaster here at ENN, and let's take a look at the maps right now. Um, this weekend, we're actually going to be having some beautiful weather. High pressure to our south is funneling warm air from the Gulf of Mexico, so we're going to have some warm and pretty clear skies for this weekend, even though we do have the low pressure in Canada with the opposing cold front that may cool it down, but fortunately we won't see any rain until the next week. And let's take a look at the weekly forecast, shall we? Let's start on Monday. We have highs of 47 with a low of 38 with rain if possible. Tuesday, we're beginning to cool down with highs 39 with a low of 28 with rain skies possible. On Wednesday hump day, it's going to be a highs of 35 with a low of 27 with rain possible. Thursday, we're going to start seeing a change with sunny skies with a high of 35 and a low of 28. And Friday, the last day of the work week and school week, highs 33 with a low of 28 with sunny skies. And let's take a look at today's trivia question. When does spring begin? A, March 20th, B, March 17th, C, March 29th, or D, April 1st? And today's trivial question answer is A, March 20th. And all I have to say is since we've survived winter, we have made it, spring has sprung, and I'm glad we're having warmer temperatures and sunny skies. I think we deserve it after surviving that brutal winter that we just went through. I'm Dorian Churn with this week's weather forecast. Welcome back, Edinburgh. I'm Patrick Nuzzo here with your sports. In basketball, the men's team finished with a 13-15 and record. The women fared a little better as they made it to the PSAC championship game against California. Take a look. Well, hold on to your kilts, ladies and gentlemen. Can't leave Kayla Smith that wide open, John. She'll knock it down every time. To the left wing now, Darcy Jass going to pull up for the quick three and knocks it down. Wow, Darcy Jackson is alive. Tonight, 11 to six, Scott's lead by five. Dave Brown's got the baseline, goes up against two defenders and knocks it down, 20 to 14. Shot clock, 
to Lindsey. Lindsey slowing it down. Jackson drives in. The runner, 15-footer, rattles in. It's good for 28-19. Edinburgh lead biggest of the game, nine points, five seconds to go. Seabunk over to the left wing. Shot up, Gatoni for three. Air balls it. Rebound of Lucetic, and that's the first half. The Scots are going into halftime with a 28-19 lead. I'm proud of these Scots so far. Oh, absolutely, John. Name round to get some easy two. Kate Seabong jump pass. Amy Johns buries the three from the left wing. 33-31. This is as close as it's been in a long time. This lead is two. Seabom over the top. Amy Johns backs down. Renee Brown and lays it in. Ties this game back up. I can't remember the last time it was all knotted up, but it is third. I think it was knotted up 6-6 six, six for about the first five minutes of the game. 33 all now. 16-12 remain. Renee Brown, nice back door. I mean, nice back cut there. Lays it in. Scott's have the lead again. 35-33. 16 to go. Only. Over to the left wing now, Renee Brown shoots up for three, buries it in the face of Kayla Smith, and that is huge. That's the way to stop the bleeding. Why not get presented with two straight blocks, one of them on the All-American Kayla Smith, comes right back down to the other end, she gets the lay-in. Another turnover caused by Blazetic. They come back down, Renee Brown knocks it down for three. Really slowing things down now, smart move by the Scots up 14. Over to the right wing to Jackson. Jackson going to drive right baseline. Nothing is there. Pull up for the shot. Oh, it rims out. She gets her own board. Goes back up high off the glass. It's good. 60 to 44. Edinburgh's lead at 16. Biggest of the game. 7.30 to go. Great effort by Darshay Jackson. She's been wearing a sweatshirt all week now, saying the living legend. I think she's living up to it tonight. She's got 18 points for the Scots and assists, two rebounds, and she just had a big block when Kayla Smith beat her defender there. They're winning with heart and they're winning with effort, John. And oh, a little bit of talent thrown in there as well. And a lot of sound play. There are 90 seconds to go as the Scots have the ball in the lead by 20. Stan Swank wants a 30 second break. I think this is all over. because they're a team and they play as a team and they get along so well and they, they understand that it's a team concept and that's fun to coach. This is the first PSAC title for the Lady Scots since 1990. The team took a number one seed into the NCAA Division II tournament but they were not able to make it past the first round. The ladies will only be losing one player, and the talent will only be getting better. Good season to both teams, and have fun next year. The Borough Lacrosse team is now 2-1 after an 11-7 loss to Mercyhurst. The young team is showing promise, though, as they have racked up 40 goals in just three games, with 14 of those coming from freshman Victoria Smith. The ladies have upcoming games against Gannon and Urbana. Good luck, ladies. 
The softball team finds the record at 5-3 and three after the first eight games. The ladies' next opponent is Fairmont State, who they'll face at the Salem Tournament in Salem, Virginia. Once again, good luck. And finally, Chris Honeycutt, Torsten Gillespie, and Johnny Gresheimer all picked up wins in the first round of the NCAA Division I National Championship on Thursday. We'll be sure to bring you more information on the wrestlers as they progress through the tournament. Oh, that'll do it for sports this week. We'll see you guys next week. I'm Patrick Nuzzo. Everyone tune in to our next broadcast as we focus on the annual Edinburgh Maple Festival. Until then, everyone enjoy the warm weather, and I'm Erica Hughes, and you've been watching ENN.